Hello again, I am Blunty. If you haven't seen the first video of this series of Ryzen 5 CPU vids, you should check it out. It'll give you some useful context into how I approached my testing, benchmarks and gameplay. This particular video is about the Ryzen 1600X, a 6-core, 12-thread CPU, stock clocked at 3.6GHz, boosting up to 4GHz. You're also seeing it matched against the overclock I was able to achieve, 3.95GHz, and yes, I was a little bit annoyed that I managed just shy of a nice round 4GHz figure. I will note, however, that I was using AMD's Wraith Max cooler, and while the 1600X doesn't come with a cooler in its own box, you can consider this basically the stock cooler for it. And it does actually perform quite nicely, it's nowhere near as obnoxious or loud as Intel's stock coolers, so it is actually a legitimate choice for this CPU. But I think that with a more aggressive aftermarket cooler, or indeed water cooling, it could reach past 4 GHz. Now, as you can see in the GTA 5 benchmark and gameplay here, the overclock has a fairly subtle effect. For the most part, this is because GTA 5, like many games, isn't especially optimized for taking advantage of CPUs with high core counts and high thread counts. What does take advantage of this aspect of Ryzen architecture, though, is things like video encoding and other CPU-intensive tasks, as shown by the Geekbench Mixed CPU Load Benchmark and the Cinebench CPU Test, both showing quite a noticeable improvement in the score for the overclock. The Ashes of the Singularity CPU Loaded Benchmark in DX12 mode showed a small but consistent push forward in the final score. Rise of the Tomb Raider, also in DX12 mode, also sucked out a small stack of extra frames per second. Interestingly, in Mafia 3, there was almost no difference at all, and clearly a bottleneck rests elsewhere for this game. You can also see by the CPU usage numbers that this game too is not optimized to take full advantage of all the extra overhead this 12-thread CPU can offer it. And of course, it's a similar story for the CPU-intensive Watch Dogs 2. The overclock pulls out some advantage here and there, but on the whole, it's not the advantage you'd hope for, at least yet. But... As new games come out and some existing popular games might get patched, we can and should expect to actually see significant performance gains on Ryzen. But for right now, launch day for the Ryzen 5, your overclocks may not be going to smack the game around like you may expect or hope. However, as I will show in more detail in a separate dedicated video on this issue, all that extra headroom on Ryzen does in fact hand you a significant advantage right now if you're a streamer or aspire to be or work with video or a YouTuber and all that kind of stuff. So stay tuned for that one. It's an eye-opener. Thanks for watching. I am Lutty and I'll catch you next time.